All right, welcome back to Split Decision. This week on episode 42, we're going to be talking UFC Vegas 91, Nicolau versus Perez. After that, we're going to talk top five, our top five draft this week. We're going with top five draft busts. It's going to be exciting. That's in honor of the uh, NFL draft going on right now, Thursday. Shout out Drake May 3rd overall. Oh, uh, just released? Sweet. And then from there, we're going to um, finish everything up with stakes and takes. Give you a recap of last week's bets, takes and stakes, and stakes and takes. Check out splitdecisionpod.com where you're going to find out all of our episodes, graphics, top five, previous things, everything. All right, let's go. All right, so the UFC returns after taking a much-needed break after the best card ever in UFC 300, and we return in proper UFC fashion to the Apex for a fight night. And it's a well-deserved coming back to the Apex. Give everybody a breather with a normal normal fight night. Got to ease back into it before the next pay-per-view. Yeah, like we say, violence is forever, and fight nights are forever. So it's a six-car, uh, six-fight car uh, main card uh, and the first fight is going to be the American Tim Means the Dirty Bird taking on uh, Euros Medic the doctor we've seen Medic fight before I'm pretty sure we've covered Tim Means before uh, Tim Means comes in with a record of 33 wins 15 losses one draw one no contest a staggering 15 wins 12 losses one no contest in the UFC so he's been in there a while up and down taking on Medic who's coming off of a loss uh, he's 3-2 and two in the UFC 9-2 and two overall He's never been to the scorecard, uh, Medic, the doctor. You're right. I actually thought uh, Medic was going to win against the um, Orobai. His in his UFC debut, he impressed. He Orobai kind of dominated Medic. Yeah, he threw him on the ground. He just he went with a relentless takedown approach and just uh, sub take subbed him with a face crank. One interesting thing, Medic, three and two in the UFC. As I said, he only has two career losses. Both of those are by submission. His three UFC wins. All by knockout. Yeah. So he seems to – he has a game plan that he follows. Yeah, he doesn't He doesn't try to stray from it when he knows, you know, what's going on. He Or not what's going on. When his game plan's working, he sticks to it. If it doesn't, he tries to adapt. More often than not, we've seen that happening with his, you know, 9-2 and two overall record. Tim Means, his last win or his last fight was a win. Coming off of a win. Uh, for that, three losses, though. Three losses. In now, a row. that win was really to retain a spot on the UFC roster – uh, Andre Fialho, who he beat in the third round by KO, he was released the following month. So yeah, it's really – You rarely see guys, unless they're superstars, say like Tony, Tony Ferguson, Ferguson, lose right. like four in a row and still be in the UFC. So it was a career-saving win for him in his last last time out. Right. So Tim Means, he's a striking first fighter. He and can work on the ground when he needs to. We're kind of burying the lead here. He's 40 years old, and he's fighting a 30-year-old. So there's a big age difference in this. Yeah, and I think the stat is like 67 or 68% of the time the younger fighter wins when there's a large age difference. In 10 years, you would say it's pretty large. Yeah. Um, I think Medich here, Medich here uh, is going to mix it up when he has to. But I think he's going to overall just you know take advantage of the opportunities he finds in the fight. I think when... Means makes a mistake. I think Medich is going to just jump all over it, and I think that's how we see the fight going. Yeah, I'm going to go with the younger guy, the doctor, uh, Medich, for the win as well. Would you say that Medich is going to see a patient on Saturday? He's not going to help a patient. Oh, so he didn't take the Hippocratic Oath? That's the one where you say you can't like kit like you have to help them. Yeah, Yeah. right. He's the opposite. He's gonna tell everything. He's gonna break HIPAA laws. There you go. On Saturday. There you go. Let's get mean. All right, Jonathan JS JSP, not GSP. JSP. I hate it. This is a side note. I hate it when they try to play off the GSP name because he's not the only one that does it. There's a couple others. But come on, JSP. Be creative. Featherweight fighters taking on David the Silent Assassin Onama. Uh, Jonathan Pierce is 14 and 5. He has 9 KOs, 2 subs, 3 decisions. 5 and 2 in the UFC. He's, you know, he's pretty good. He ended his 5 fight win streak with his only I'm sorry, with his only sub loss to Yo Anderson Brito. Um Yeah, so his two UFC's 5 and 2 as I said in the UFC 
Our only sub loss in the UFC, lost I should say. The first, his first UFC fight by knockout. Won right. five in a row and then lost his last fight by sub. So Onama is 3-2 and two in the UFC. He has a KO win over Gabriel Santos most recently, which I think that plays to Onama's fighting style. While he you know, can sub people, he likes to... You know, he, he likes to throw hands. Never been finished in 13 career fights. He's only had two out of the scorecard. Yeah, I think he's and they impressive. Both were losses. I think it's an impressive underdog when you have somebody like David Onama coming off of a win. Um, I think it. I think it's going to be a highlight here for David Onama. Pierce is three and two is the favorite, and this is a pretty close. You know, it's minus 170 to plus 140. Onama's one and one as the underdog. He's only, you know, like we said, three and two in the UFC. I think David Onama's going to win, and I think the hands are going to be shown here. And if it can't be shown as clean as Onama wants, I think he's just going to take him down and choke him out. Well, I originally had Pierce, but you kind of you kind of talked me into Onama. I'm going to go David Barack Onama as well for the win, Silent Assassin. Ooh, I like that one. So let's move on next one. Thought of it. Damn it. This next one, uh, you might want to watch from the beginning because I don't think it's going to last very long. Yeah, Austin Lane, the six six American fighter, comes in o one and one in the UFC. Both of his fights are against Junior Tafa, correct? Yes. Poked him in the eye the first time, no contest. Second time, got knocked out by Junior Tafa. Which I think, honestly, the first fight was going to go that way. I mean, we talked about that. Austin Lane's the the kind of guy where it's. And Junior Top, honestly. It's going to go one of the two ways. Right. Either he's getting knocked out or he's knocking you out. And he's taking on an undefeated Brazilian fighter, making his UFC debut. Uh, help me with this name. Jo- Jonata Denise. Jonata Denise. As I said, UFC debut. He's 6-0. All six wins by knockout. All of them first-round knockouts. Yeah, I mean, the only he's thing we've really former seen. Former professional kickboxer, too. I mean, he is... You watch his tape and you see some of his highlights. He's an impressive guy. Very impressive. And the only thing we've you know seen as far as like close to UFC is his one fight in the Contender Series, which kind of earned first him, round knockout earned his contract. Uh, like you said, first round knockout comes in with a lot of power and little desire to wrestle. You know he wants to put his hands on you and beat you to death. Um, maybe with Denise. Um, see what she did there. Yeah, with a combined 22 total fights and no decisions between the two of them, I would bet a finish for this Yeah, fight. not only no decisions, only one of them hasn't ended in a knockout, and it was a, actually a submission win by Austin Lane before the UFC. Um, that makes me lean on the, uh, the favorite, the minus 275 favorite here. I got to pick with the fans, Vegas, and the hands. Jonathan Denise. I'm going to agree with you. I'm picking Denise. I'm going to go with a guy that I haven't seen got knocked out before, and that's 6-0. and Austin Lane. Uh, that's a good way to I mean, it. in his two fights, we saw him poke an eye, egregious eye poke. Yeah, that was a pretty bad eye and poke. And then get knocked out. Uh, I'm going to go with the Brazilian in his UFC debut to get the win, stay undefeated, keep his first-round knockout streak going, too. Right, absolutely. All right, let's go on to the next fight. Women's flyweight division. The only women's fight we're going to cover. Ariane, the queen of violence, Lipsky. This is a civil war here, two Brazilians. 17-8 and eight for her. She's six KOs, four subs, seven decisions, four losses by KO, and four losses by decision. Six and five in the UFC, though. She's kind of been up and down UFC-wise. Yeah, it's kind of uh, not a win-loss like streak. But on but a three-fight win streak, so. There you go. Uh, Kareen Killer Silva, 17 and 4 in her career, nine KOs, eight submissions, never won by decision. Point that out. Three and 0 in the UFC, all of them by submission. Right. So, but I gotta point out her losses: one KO loss, two sub losses, and one decision. So she's a wrestler favorite, but she's also been caught a couple times. Like you said, never in the UFC. And Lipsky's, I mean, she has a little bit of a wrestling. I mean, she can sub people. Right. She's a uh, purple belt in Brazilian, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So, Both of them are coming off of impressive wins, as we said. And Both Silva's them, on an eight-fight win streak. That's noted as well. That means you you got a lot of confidence coming into this fight. You're riding high. You've been riding high for a while. She gets finishes. I mean, all, as we said, 17-4, and four, all of them finishes. All her wins are finishes. So and she's very and impressive. And 3-0 in the UFC, all subs. So she's doing kind of what she wants to do. She hunts submissions. Obviously, she lands them, being 3-0 and in the UFC. Now... Lipsky's never been finished by sub, 
So I think it's going to be a very interesting fight. I think it's going to be a good back and forth fight. The odds are close. I lean Arian Lipsky because she's won seven matches for on decision. Showing that she throws hands, she keeps it competitive. She's good on the ground, a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, like I said. With her six KOs, it shows she has power. And she's also been in the UFC for a while longer. Kind of everything going for that. I think the underdog on this one's going to take it. I Arianne disagree Lipsky. with you. I'm taking the undefeated UFC fighter, 3-0 in the UFC, as we said. I think she's well-rounded. She can knock her out. She can sub her. Lipsky, as you said, hasn't lost by sub, but that's okay because Silva can come in and knock her out. She's a girl, and it's not – You don't Careful. You don't see it a lot in women's MMA. She consistently – finishes people she Damn. does not go to scorecard this dude just hung the shovel back up as soon as he took it out he just doop, put it back where it belonged and Good i think job. she continues that i think her name her nickname is appropriate killer i think she quote unquote kills lipsky i got silva by finish i'm kind of leaning knockout kinda, I, like I think she gets her first ufc knockout this i morning. do think this is going to be a close fight out it's not definitely in my opinion not going to be a ragdoll type of affair um, but I like that we differ on something. I uh, I hate it when I don't hate it, but I, di I dislike it when you switch to the pick I had because then it's I usually win that pick, and I need you to lose sometimes if I'm gonna you know get the ground back on you. But anyway, let's go to the light heavyweight division. Ryan Superman Span. I don't know how Ryan Span's only 32 years old. I feel like he's been in the UFC forever. Yeah. I don't know. That is a good question. I guess his date of birth adds up to him being 32 i mean he's 20 yeah probably i haven't looked at his birth certificate though so i don't know right he's taken on bogdan guskov otherwise known as the uzbek the uzbek anthony smith yeah one and one in the ufc for guskov uh superman spawn as i said he's been in the ufc for a little while seven and four two he's and three in his last five and two straight losses coming yeah, not in. looking the best for four and him. four in his last eight so he started three you know in the ufc and then he's kind of been up and down since then coming off of a rematch loss against anthony smith as you said guskov's kind of the uzbeki anthony smith ryan spawn seems to have a thing where he can't beat anthony smith he's lost to him twice now right uh guskov 15 and 3 with 13 ko so he's a guy he has crazy power he likes to finish guys never been to the scorecard and won. he's only been in the scorecard once he lost, lost that fight right he's, he's a guy he's, he's only lost three times and he's lost once by ko once by sub once by decision so that's kind of impressive in its own right yeah and as i said one and one in the ufc his one win is a ko his one loss is a sub so he's Kinda. He's a guy, he's, seemed, he's kind of wild. Yeah, he's, I'm, he's a wild boy. It's, it's nerve-wracking to watch him come out and fight because he's shown that he can do literally everything. He can win he either can, way he, except by decision, and he can, uh, quote-unquote, die anyway. Right. I'm using die a lot today. I don't know why, but... Hey, it's all good. It's a, violence, it's a violent sport. People get it. Uh, Guskov, like you said, never won by decision, but he has 15 finishes. I got to go with Bogdan Guskov to win. I think... He's going to take down Ryan Superman Spawn. I think Spawn's time in the UFC, especially with his recent time not being the greatest for his own achievements, I think Guskov is going to take advantage of that kind of film, take advantage on, of Spawn while he's on the dumps, and be the Superman's kryptonite. I think Guskov is going to play off of Ryan Spawn's inability to beat Anthony Smith, Oof. and he's going to say, I look just like Anthony Smith. Except I'm Uzbeki, so I'm probably tougher. And I and got. I, I will say the last time he fought Anthony Smith, he did wobble him. He did wobble him, but he still lost. Right. It was a split decision, but I got Guskov winning the fight, though. Good. We agree on that as well. All right, main event: Matthews Nicolau versus Alex Perez. Nicolau, 19 wins, three losses, one draw. He's seven and two in the UFC. One interesting thing to note, he only has two finishes out of the seven wins, and both of his losses are by KO. Yep. And Last take, loss was to Roy Val when he was on his, uh, his kind of title run trajectory. He went next fight, lost to Pantoja, and then won against Moreno. Um, so, you know, Roy, was, Roy Val kind of proved it's a worthy it's guy a to get loss, knocked, yeah. off, knocked out too. And he's taking on Perez, uh, 24 wins, eight losses. He's six and four in the UFC, so he's kind of been up and down. He has three L's in a row, but you look at the guys he's lost to. It's uh, Makayev. Right. It's Pantoja. Now, Makayev was by decision. 
that's and that was his last that fight shows that, that was in uh, march not it wasn't that long ago right then it was the pentosia then it was the figurator so those are all legitimate losses uh makayev is a undefeated prospect who a lot of people think is a future title contender and the and other I two agree. are literally champs yeah no yeah, well, i that that's definitely things to point out and alex perez is never a quitter he's only been finished six times Look at all the times he's fought. He's fought 32 total times in his career. But one interesting thing is his last win was all the way back in 2020. So it's been four right. years almost since his last win, which is – yeah. Before he hasn't his fought loss, a lot, but still. That's, right. So before his loss to Mokaev, he hadn't fought since July of 22. And then prior – like he has had kind of layoffs in between. I get it. Which but is he why he's recently, making the quick turnaround and – he fought in March of this year. He's right. fighting again. I was going to say he was recently active, so that's good to see. He is still, like, motivated by it. Uh, Nikolaou is 1-0 and against shorter reach, and he wins 67% of the time as the favorite, which he is in this fight. And he, you, we mentioned his last loss. Before that loss of Roy Val, Nikolaou, six straight wins. So he was a guy. He was building momentum. He was yeah. moving his way to the top of the division. I still think he's one of the top fighters in the division. Yeah, I don't think – like kind of that's why i mentioned the roy val loss is because i don't think we can just take it away from his him as a fighter I you think have a six a, fight win streak and you get knocked out in the first round it's kind of like that's i don't you want to say bad luck because it wasn't luck by roy val but it's like yeah but it's it was a tough UFC. night that's what i expect to happen yeah Everybody you're at the top falls. of the division of ufc like that's just a tough fight right exactly so i i think um matthews nicolau is going to win i think it's going to be a tough fight for alex perez but the guy's resilient and he's not going to quit so he i mean that's why the odds are so close for all these fights for saturday is i think nicolau is going to win but perez could easily come in there and win yeah i think i agree with you i'm picking nicolau and i'm kind of leaning towards this is going to be a decision fight it's going to go to the scorecards